Welcome to another edition of the Roadrunner Review, the 30-minute magazine show that features MSU Denver sports and their highlights from the past month. I'm Kermit Ball, and sitting next to me in this amazing studio is Lennox Williams. Thanks, Kermit. From the balcony of the gym to the Regency Athletics Complex to now in the studio, we definitely get around on, on, on the show. On today's episode, we feature a highlight from the postseason as the fall sports head into the conference tournament, and we help you to get you know our 2015-2016 men's and women's basketball teams. And we also have a special guest joining us in studio is Dr. Anthony Grant, the new athletic director here at MSU Denver. We'll speak with Anthony Rodriguez about how he made it to the Mile High City and what kind of ideas he has for the future of the athletic department. But before we can get to all that, Anthony is here to catch us up to date on all the Roadrunner news. What's the latest, A-Rod? Hey, Thanks guys. We'll start things off with some cross country news as our Roadrunners took part in some postseason meets. Head coach Nick Moss and his squad first hit the road south to Canyon, Texas for the South Central Regional Championships. The women were led by senior Lauren Salachi, who placed 21st overall, earning a spot on the all-region team. Senior Nick Cadlick led the men's team to an impressive fourth place finish in the 10 meter course. Two weeks later, the men advanced to the NCAA meet where they finished 20th overall, scoring 491 points. Cadillac finished his cross country career as the top road runner, crossing the line in 30 minutes and 26 seconds for a 38th place finish. And one more piece of news is our Regency Athletic Complex was featured in the national publication of Athletics Administration. The facility feature highlights the various uses for the complex, which includes the upcoming Spring Sports Festival, which will house the national championship for men's and women's tennis, softball, and women's lacrosse in Division II. Coach Avi and her squad came off a rebuilding year that featured seven freshmen and just one seniors. Last year's team came up just one win shy of reaching the RMAC tournament, but expectations are a little bit higher for this season. Playing Division II basketball as a freshman is no easy task. Eight of them played significant minutes for the Roadrunners last season. Last year was definitely like a learning experience and I think for us and coach. So, you know, trying to get used to each other and how each other plays. It teaches you some patience. But the underclassmen did everything together in year one. They won together, they lost together, and they became a team together. It helped us grow as a team. So I think overall, I think it's just nice to have everybody back and, you know, not having so much of that learning. It's just like, you know, going over the same concepts, you know? There was a lot of kinks we had to work out, and it was definitely something. It was kind of like a journey. We knew we weren't going to, I mean, it's the kind of things you know you're not going to be able to compete against those older girls. While that slew of sophomores look to take that next step in their careers, a trio of juniors look to take the reins and lead this squad back to the playoffs. You know, make them feel a little more comfortable with what's going on. So yeah, I've definitely had to step up and be a little bit more vocal on the court. Now I'll get on them, um, but I'm going to do it in more of a positive way. I'm not really like the throw down, not even the throw down the hammer, but I mean like I'll critique them, but it's more of a, hey, like we need to get that next time. Like let's not be like, oh my gosh, like you just messed up. Returning nine players, including three starters, has brought expectations of a sixth place finish by the preseason polls. This team believes it has what it takes to reach those expectations and more. I've looked at the first few games we've played already and like, wow, like we have so much potential and to have this group for two years, like this year we can get stuff done and I definitely know next year we can get stuff done. The only expectation I'm putting on them is that they come to practice every day, work their rear end off and have a positive attitude and then I believe that the rest of it will take care of itself. The women's team should be fun to watch this year. We talk about the chemistry and how it's overflowing for Coach Jave's squad, but for head coach Derek Clark and his team, the men's basketball pr program features almost an entirely new group of players. We bring back Anthony Rodriguez to help us get to know the 2015-2016 men's basketball team. Kermit is absolutely right. As the men's hoops program returns just four players and welcomes in 10 brand new roadrunners to the Mile High City. So while the expectations are always high for MSU Denver basketball, patience is a virtue that head coach Derek Clark may have to rely on this season. Coming off a disappointing end to last season where MSU Denver was ousted in the opening round of the NCAA tournament for the first time since the 2009-2010 season, there's more than enough motivation for this year's squad. That was one of the biggest things that motivated us through this summer and all preseason. We remember that last game versus Midwestern State and that's what every day we try to remember that and we got to bring that intensity on the floor, come out and we're itching to get on the court to play our first game. 
For the third year in a row, the Roadrunners lose the Armac Player of the Year from the year prior, and for the second year in a row, they lose the Division II Player of the Year. With all of that turnover, the four returners, three of which who are seniors, are expected to step up and fill in for that lost experience. Instead of doing it with words, they have to get on the floor and their actions have to, you know, uh, set the tone, you know, if they're going to be leaders. It's their action. They have to be everyday guys. It's as simple as that. We lost many uh, great players and they're going to be hard to replace, but uh, being seniors this year, we have to step up and, and uh, show, lead by example, you know, in practice and on the floor, communicate at a high level. And uh, I feel we're doing that this year and we just have to lead by example. Ten new faces will don the red and blue this season, and now they'll try to understand what Roadrunners basketball is all about. Um, I feel like we brought in a lot of new guys that can uh, put us in a position to win. I know we lost a lot, but I mean that's been a story every year since I've been here. You know, we've lost all Americans every year since I've been here, so I feel like um, coach did a good job of recruiting and uh, put ourselves in a position to make a good run this year. One thing we got to do as seniors and upperclassmen returns is kind of help them out and help them out to see what Coach Clark wants and what he kind of do and kind of be another voice to them besides Coach Clark. And as always with MSU Denver men's basketball, the expectations are there for this year's squad. The Roadrunners enter the season ranked 18th in the nation and are once again picked to win the Rocky Mountain Athletic Conference. Coach uh, holds us to high expectations every every morning, every day. Um, I mean, our expectations don't don't change and we want the expectations. We, our, our pressure comes internally. We want the pressure and we excel in pressure. So. Bring it on, you know. We put a lot of pressure on ourselves, you know. We want to be really good, and that's myself, that's the players. You know, they expect to be really good this year, but the only way we're going to do that is, is by every day just giving a great effort and getting better. We are just getting started here on the Roadrunner Review. It's playoff time for our fall sports teams. There's no bigger time than the postseason where big time players come to play and where coaches make big time decisions. Come on back to catch all the action where it's win or go home. Welcome back. While the basketball season is just tipping off, the volleyball campaign is coming down the home stretch. Head coach Debbie Hendricks and her squad have been one of the hottest teams in all of the country, having won 15 of their last 16 games, which includes two sweeps of Colorado Mines, the top team in the RMAC. The Oregon Diggers are just one game ahead of the Roadrunners in those standing. And with one week left to go in the regular season, the Red and Blue have the outside chance of trying to grab the number one seed for the conference tournament. Roadrunners took care of business against Colorado Christian at home, sweeping the Krugers, hitting a fantastic 3 0 2 for the match. The team was led by Junior Michaela Smith, who led everyone with 14 kills and hitting 300 in the three sets. Tina Libera, Kylie Hong tallied 17 digs in the match. After dropping their season finale to UC Colorado Springs on the road, MSU Denver would finish in a four-way tie for second place with a 14-4 conference record. After all the tiebreakers were said and done, Coach Hendricks and her squad would earn the three seed, setting up a home playoff match in the first round of the RMAC tournament. Before we get to those playoffs, the Rocky Mountain Athletics Conference handed out their regular season award. Four road runners earned spot on the all RMAC teams. Junior Vasati Fiatoa, who led the RMAC in hitting percentage, earned the first team all RMAC honors. Setter Brandy Tour also named to the first team after finishing second in the conference in assists per set. Ryan Erdeman was rewarded for her breakout season with the first team all conference nomination. And finally, Smith was named to the second team after leading the Roadrunners in kill with 380. On to the RMAC tournament where the Red and Blue hosted UC Colorado Springs in the first round. And the Mountain Lions were no easy opponent as they defeated MSU Denver in both meetings during the regular season. Smith getting things started off right for the Red and Blue, pounding out seven kills in the first set alone. She would finish the match with a match high 22 kills and lead her team to the 26-24 set one win. Second team all-conference Taylor Hamilton rallied her team in the second set. She finds success in the middle and carries her team to the win. She led the Mountain Lions with 14 kills. Senior Summer Gregor had one of her best matches of the year, crushing a season-high 18 kills. The defense was spectacular as three Roadrunners recorded double-digit digs, holding UCCS to a mere 197 hitting percentage. Roadrunners take the final two sets to avenge their two losses to UCCS. So the revenge tour continued on in Golden, Colorado, as Coach Hendrick and the squad took on Colorado Mesa in the semifinals. First set belongs to the Mavericks. Middle blocker Hattie Giannetti took advantage of the Roadrunners' miscue and finished off the kill. Into the second set, and Ali Savernich served up a ace. It was one of 13 service aces 
for the Mavericks, who gave MSU Denver fits from the service line all night. The Roadrunners make a run in the third set. Smith again rose to the occasion, blasting 17 kills in the match and keep her team alive, stealing away the third set, 26-24. The third set was a battle. Han was moved to the front line from the Libera spot to help support the offense and came through with seven kills. But the third attack errors by the Roadrunners was too much to overcome and Colorado Mesa take the match 3-1. The Roadrunners were named to the NCAA tournament for the 16th straight season, and they've entered to San Angelo, Texas for their first round matchup. Coach Hendricks and her squad came in as the number three seed. Their opponent, Arkansas Force Smith, was the six. The Lions' Marissa Murphy came to play. Here she powers down the kill for the early lead. Then on the Smith kill attempt, Murphy is there for the block. Fort Smith takes the first set. Laraway from the middle. The freshman played great, recording nine kills and hitting 316 in the match. Runners even the match at one set apiece. Han was stellar for the red and blue, crushing 22 kills in the match while recording 32 digs. She leads her team to the set three win and the 2-1 advantage. The Lions do take the fourth set and we're heading into the fifth, but Arkansas Fort Smith was great defensively, recording 112 digs, and they end MSU Denver's season with the 3-2 win. Lennox, it was a great season for Coach Debbie Hendricks and her volleyball squad. They would win 15 of 16 games, and next year's team returns a lot of great players that should keep them atop the RMAC. You're right, Kermit. While the team will lose Summer Gregor, Abby Nolan, Kylie Hong, they'll return Theotowa, Smith, and Erdeman. Next year's team is going to be lighting up the RMAC to make another run at a conference championship. It's time for a break here on the show, but don't go anywhere. We welcome in new athletic director, Dr. Anthony Grant to the show for an exclusive in-studio interview. We'll be right back. Some students come to Metropolitan State University of Denver to find their future. Others look to sharpen their current skills. In the case of David Thibodeau, it was both. Our faculty helped fuel his entrepreneurial spirit while encouraging him to pursue his personal passions. These two talents came together in Ska Brewing Company, which he co-founded in 1998 in Durango and is considered one of the top up-and-coming Colorado companies. Are you a college student that needs a place to live? Are you still living with your parents and want your own space? The Regency Student Housing is perfect for you. The community offers many amenities such as a fitness center, two basketball courts, big screen amphitheater, all you can eat dining hall, bowling alley, arcade, free parking, and a shuttle to and from the Auraria campus. For more information, please call 303-477-1950 or visit our website at regencystudenthousing.com. Thanks for coming back to the Roadrunner Review. I'm Anthony Rodriguez, and we're here with Dr. Anthony Grant, the new athletic director for the Roadrunners. Dr. Grant, thanks so much for coming on the show today. Anthony, thanks for having me. Absolutely. So we're both relatively successful individuals. You obviously a lot more so. Uh, I think it might be the name Anthony. What do you think? I think so. Anthony, that, Anthony is a strong name, so you know I think that might have a little something to do. Absolutely. But, yeah. All right, well, you come from Millersville University, another Division II program. Mm -hmm. uh, tell us why you decided to come be a part of the Roadrunners program. Right, right. The Roadrunners uh, athletic program really had a strong uh, reputation within Division II. So uh, top to bottom, front porch of the front porch you know, has been the, the, the basketball program, but the, the program itself has been known to have successful programs you know, all, all throughout. And so um, it was a really good opportunity for, for me and my family, both uh, professionally and um, personally, to, to come out here to, to Denver, Colorado, and be a part of an of a outstanding uh, athletic program and outstanding institution. Circumstances usually for a new athletic director coming in, it's usually a program sometimes in turmoil. That, that obviously not the case here at MSU Denver. Um, you know, it's in a pretty good spot, pretty big shoes to fill as well. So. Um, Talk about how you feel coming into a program that is where MSU Denver is right now. Mm -hmm. I feel good about it. You know, you're right. You know, oftentimes in transition, the, the new athletic director comes in and, and, and has to, to address things immediately because it's a time of turmoil. You know, for me, I'm very fortunate not to be in that situation. So I have an opportunity to really take time to ask a lot of questions, learn about the department, the coaches, the student athletes, um, as well as the institution and, and the broader uh, metropolitan uh, community. And so, you know, for me, um, com coming in, I can kind of slow walk it a little bit 
and, uh, and figure out what the culture is, figure out what I want to do to put you know, my, my fingerprint on it and, and continue to, to build off of a strong tradition that's already been here. What is it about sports that gets you excited to be an athletic director and what was your passion like and for sports kind of growing up? It pertains to, to why, you know, I wanted to be in uh, intercollegiate athletics and, and what kind of gets me going. You know, just the nature of sports in general gets me going. I, you know, I'm a, a sports enthusiast, played football and ran track coming up. Um, you know, so being here and being able to do something mm -hmm. that I love, you know, is, is really a blessing, actually. And so, you know, being around the, the coaches and student athletes and, and seeing all the hard work and effort that they're putting in in order to be at the top of their respective games is really something, you know, to be to behold. And so, you know, I spoke very pointedly about, you know, my focus on, on academics and, and focus on, you know, the well-rounded, you know, development of the student athlete. And that's, that's a part of it. That's a significant part of it. That, that's why we're doing what we're doing. But, you know, from an athletic perspective, you know, we're all competitors. You know, I want to win just like, you know, our coaches and our student athletes do. And so, you know, for me to be able to be a part of that and be able to put the uh, resources in place for them to continue to be successful is really something that you know I, I'm really focused on and, and excited about um, being a new athletic director. It's it's really exciting to to see the level of support from you know just the the faculty and staff and and our student population here at MSU Denver. You know I had a, a, a great opportunity within my first month to talk to alums and fans and other supporters of, of Roadrunner Athletics and there was a, a constant theme you know through all the conversations about how much pride that you know they have of being a part of the Roadrunner family and so you know I'm, I'm really fortunate to be able to be welcomed into that family and be a part of it. All right well, we have to take a short break here on the Roadrunner Review but we'll have Dr. Anthony Grant for one more segment and he's going to tell us how his first 100 days have gone here at MSU Denver and what he has in store for the future of the athletics program. You don't want to miss it. I'm Deshaun Phoenix, senior floor from the Roadrunner men's basketball team. In Alamos, and then that was blocked by Phoenix, and they got him in transition. Goes up the layup, and the foul. And you're watching the Metro State Broadcast Network. Get rowdy. I'm Eric Rare, senior guard from the Roadrunner men's basketball team. The Rare across the court. Rare misses the three, gets his own rebound. Great hustle, and he gets the lay in. Eric Rare. And you're watching the Metro State Broadcast Network. Get rowdy. So glad you're back with us here on the Roadrunner Review. I'm still here with the new MSU Denver Athletic Director, Dr. Anthony Grant. And for those that don't know what an athletic director does, mm -hmm. uh, talk about your main positions, your, the, the main jobs you have to do here, especially right. here at MSU Denver. Right. There, there's a lot that goes into to being an effective athletic director. You know, you know as, as an administrator in general, in order to be successful, you have to do a lot of listening. And so, you know, what I have done uh, kind of in my first 100 days or so is ask a lot of questions, get a chance to know the environment, the landscape, student athletes, the coaches in order to figure out, you know, what the needs are. Um, you know, in, in the first segment, we talked about uh, the fact that I'm able to come in in an environment that is not a crisis situation. So, you know, knock on wood, mm -hmm. you know, I have an opportunity to, to really kind of learn the landscape and, and figure out what I need to do in order to insert myself um, into the into the program and so you know when you ask specifically you know what an athletic director does I mean it's so multifaceted you know first and foremost you have to you know set the direction and the vision for the athletic department in order to get everyone on the same page and that's from you know the the, the senior staff the the coaches student athletes everyone needs to know you know where where we're going and as the athletic director and, the, and as the leader of the department my job is to set that vision get buy-in and, and have everyone moving forward. And then also, you know, I think it's very important uh, for me to be able to, to provide the resources to give the coaches and the student athletes what they need in order to, to, to do their jobs as coaches and then also for student athletes to have a, a high quality experience while here at MSU Denver. Well, yeah, you mentioned you've been, you've been in the program now mm -hmm. for three months. Uh, what, how, you mentioned the landscape. How has it been for you in terms of learning the landscape, the people, and how the Auraria campus works as mm -hmm. a whole? You know, it, it's different. Um, you know, I, I've come from mainly traditional institutions, and so um, this is a unique situation here at MSU Denver. You have the, the tri-institutional model, and so, you know, when, when we're looking at that, you're looking at, at, at space and, and how, you know, we, we ef efficiently utilize that. You're looking at how we promote what we're doing, and so in the Tivoli, you know, that is um, the hub for 
all three of the institutions on campus. And so we're trying to market and brand ourselves, We've got to figure out how to cut through everything else that's in that building. Um, you know, when you're trying to develop relationships and, and figure out systems, it adds a different layer when you're not only dealing with, you know, for us, you know, campus rec and, you know, the, the, uh, the educational side of the house, but you're also having to deal with two other institutions that are sharing the facility space. And so, you know, it, it's, a, it's a unique challenge. Um, it's something that I've, I've really been focused on taking time to understand so I can figure out how to navigate that. So obviously here in the community of Denver, obviously having all the sports around, you know, it's been called the front porch of the university um, by MSU Denver President Stephen, Stephen Jordan. Uh, what's it been like having him as an advocate uh, for this program? What's it been like for you? It's been really empowering, actually. You know, in order for an athletic department to be successful, you have to have support from the top. And, you know, Dr. Jordan has been a staunch advocate over the 10 years that, that he's been president here um, for athletics. You know, he's, he's held major positions um, with the Division II uh, President's Council and, and Management Councils. I mean, he's, he's done it all in Division II. And so, you know, for him to be uh, our president and for him to, to come out and say, you know, athletics is a front porch of the institution, really says a lot for his commitment to athletics. It really makes me feel comfortable in order for me to, to do my job in order to continue to elevate the program. Three months into your tenure, um, what are some ideas you're now beginning to develop and want to instill going forward to take this athletics program mm -hmm. to the next level? Mm -hmm. I would probably say the biggest thing is to get our product out into the community. Um, in order to, to garner the type of attention that we need, you know, from, from the media, from the local community, from our alums. You know, we want to have, you know, a, a home court, home field advantage. And so our student athletes and coaches go out there day in and day out and give it their all. And we're successful. We go for championships. Well, Dr. Grant, we want to thank you so much for coming on the program today. I uh, wish you the me. best of luck here uh, with the Roadrunners uh, and you here in your tenure. And uh, hopefully good things are to come for MSU Denver. Anthony, I, I appreciate that. We, we go way back, man. I mean, yeah. you know, all the way to day one. So, <laughs> you know, looking forward to having more conversations like this moving Absolutely. forward. Absolutely. Well, thanks again for joining us. Thanks, thanks, thanks for, for having me. me. Since 1909, the Rocky Mountain Athletic Conference has been a leader in collegiate athletics, with campuses in some of the most scenic areas in the United States. And now, in Salt Lake City, Utah, and Rapid City, South Dakota, the Rocky Mountain Athletic Conference, competition elevated. Final segment here on the Roadrunner Review, and we have even more playoff highlights from our soccer teams as they took on the conference's best in the RMAC tournament. But before we get to the tournament, the RMAC handed out their all-conference awards, and our own Raina Banks was named the conference's freshman of the year. The Bakersfield, California native scored five goals in her first year and added three assists. Banks was also named first team all-conference. Senior midfielders Lauren Kaufman and Noemi Polanco both earned all-conference honorable mention. On to the RMAC tournament where head coach Adrian Peets and her fifth seeded squad took on fourth seeded Regis University on the road. Despite the shoddy camera work from our fearless leader, the freshman of the year Banks gets her team on the scoreboard first in the first half on a misplay by the goalkeeper. Lauren Kaufman from way, way out goes just underneath the crossbar to give the underdog Roadrunners a 2-0 lead. Elise Buenard puts a stamp on this game with her point blank shot and the Roadrunners advance to the semifinals. MSU Denver, prize for winning versus Regis, was a date with the top team in the RMAC in Colorado School of Mine on their own pitch in Golden. A dangerous ball entered the box, Roadrunners can't clear the ball, and they pay as Peyton Sanders punched it in past Rihanna Rosales for the early 1-0 lead. Second half, Brooke Stormer goes top shelf past Rosales and his 2-0 home team. The other freshman phenom, Karina Perales, placed the ball perfectly on a far post to cut the lead in half. But that's as close as they would get as the season would end in Golan. Now for the men, and they had four roadrunners who earned all conference honors. Forward Jeff Gillis and midfield Josh Belfridge was named to the first team, while forward Danny Arubla and defender Tyler Trujillo earned second team honors. Junior Arturo Vega was placed on the honorable mention all conference. Head coach Jeremy Tittle and his squad earned a three seed in the postseason and welcome in six seeded Fort Lewis College. 
But it would be all Skyhawks who scored three goals at the Regency Athletic Complex, and the Roadrunners would see their season come to an end in the 3-0 loss. Let's get to those top plays from this past month, and they are brought to you by the Regency. Play number five comes from our women's basketball team who played Grandview in an exhibition matchup. Sophomore Emily Hardigan had a field day against the Vikings. In 25 minutes, Hardigan scored 25 points, hitting on eight of 17 from the field, including two of two from beyond the arc. This girl has a knack for finding the bottom of that net. We'll stay with women's hoop in play number four. Freshman Jalen Smith learning the ropes of Tanya Harvey's system, but here she takes the defender to school with the sweet crossover on her way to the layup. That deserves a slow-mo replay. The Roadrunners are looking for a point guard to step up, and Smith showing the nice moves. Another freshman feed on features are play number three. In the RMAC Tournament semifinals, Karina Perales on the free kick. She puts it in the perfect spot where the keeper can't reach it. It's her fourth goal on the season, but the Roadrunners fall 2-1 in the game. How about some men's hoops? Josh Wax slide to grab the loose ball, but sophomore Bunama Keita say give me that. I got better things to do with this ball, and he slams it down. What a play by the center from Senegal. And the top play from this past month comes from our volleyball squad and their home match against Colorado Christian. Angel Jurek slams down the kill attempt. Ball is heading out of bounds, but Brandy Tor runs to the other side of the net, saves it to her side of the court, and when it's all said and done, the Roadrunners take the point. We have to watch that one again. Tor has to run around the pole and in full sprint, throws up the right arm to swat it back to the Roadrunners' side. Might be the top play of the entire Roadrunners sports season. Those were the top plays from this past month, and as always, they are brought to you by the Regency. Well, guys, that Brandy Tor dig, I mean, they are all over the court all the time. You can never count out this MEC Denver volleyball team on any points. The lady was, was on fire from start to finish, and if we all remember, they won 15 of 16 games during the regular season. Yeah, winter sports now underway. Plenty of slam dunks and layups to come in the next few months of the Roadrunner Review. That's going to do it for this month's show, however. Make sure you keep up to date with everything that is MSU Denver Athletics at RoadrunnersAthletics.com. We also want to thank Anthony Grant for coming on this month's show. For Kermit Ball, Anthony Rodriguez, Short to for you, Celeste Zubia, Eric Lansing, and the entire Roadrunner Review Squad. I'm Lennox Williams, and we'll see you next month for more high-flying MSU Denver action.